Hey, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess video. It's rainy and stormy and nasty outside, so I thought I'd wear my sun shirt that I made because I'm not going to let the weather affect how I'm feeling and what kind of a day I'm having today. And that is the so-called uh, spiritual lesson I'm going to give you today. Do not be one of those kind who let the weather influence your attitude. No, you decide how you're going to feel today. If you're feeling mucky and schmucky, oh, it's rainy outside, today sucks, then turn your brain on and change your view and you'll change your life. There's the there's the message for today. Now, let's get on with the fun stuff, the chess. A lot of you have requested I show more of my games. Okay, I'm acquiescing. You don't know what that means? Look it up. <laughs> Your new word for the day. Whoa, this video is full of intellectual, fabulous stuff. No, I, I, I hesitate making it about me because... We're all in this together. I, I much more like showing off everyone else's games and the Grandmaster games and all. But since you've requested, I've got a few games I will show you because they fit in with the themes of my videos. This, this here, one month ago, is my first online game that I played when I joined Leeches. And I was terrified. My heart was pumping. Oh, I don't know anything about this guy. Oh my gosh, can I win? And I calmed down and I said, look, let's do this with just the three pillars and see how this really works. Will this work? So my three pillars, control of the center, Rooks on open files and attacking and acquiring targets while improving my position. I decided, let's keep this simple stupid so that I can please win my first game of online chess because I hesitated for a full month. Uh, the club, the Backyard Professor Chess Club, Van Chess Club, had already started and, and I had joined it later. And uh, boy, am I glad I did. I'm having so much fun with all of you guys. You, you can't believe how much I'm enjoying this. So I'm hoping that my first online chess game is not a flop or a bad game. And he's immediately fighting me for the center. So, in my opinion, this guy probably knows what the heck just a little bit. Yeah, e takes d5, e takes d5. Okay, so I've got a guy who will fight for the center. That's one step that's in his favor as far as I'm concerned. I develop knight f6. I want to control everything in the center I can and partially occupy it or fully occupy it if the case comes to that. D4. Look at this guy. Center occupation, center fighting. Okay. Okay, he's for real. Bishop e7. I wanted to castle early. No matter what, get my king tucked to safety. This is my first online game. I've got to have this thing work, man. I am nervous as all get out here. Bishop f4, look at this guy. Bishop f4, hitting the center with the bishop. Very nice, very nice. My favorite black opening at this point. Bump that pawn. Yeah, let's make this work. Let's do what I'm used to. I've been playing this for several months, practicing it on my own, looking at it through various Grandmaster games on my own. So let's see if this really will work. This is what I was most comfortable with at the time. Knight e2, look at this, giving support to the pawn that I had just hit, maintaining his bishop in the center. He's fighting me for the center. This is wonderful. So... Knight c6, I will continue to refight for the center. So it's turning out to be a solid game. He castles early. He knows what he's doing. He was rated at 1507. And that's what terrified me because this first game I had no idea what my rating was. I mean, I was told by experts that my rating was between 800 and 1100. And so if that's true, this guy is 400 rating points stronger than I am. I'm a complete novice at online chess. I hadn't been online for like four years at this point. So I had no idea. So I'm nervous. 
However, I'm going to take that pawn. I'm going to fight him for the center, one of the pillars. Without question, knight takes d4. Look at this guy. He is fighting me tooth and nail for the center. And I realized, okay, he's castled. I have to castle. I must connect my rooks. That is a law, because rooks have to find open files. That is a pillar, right? So I'm trying my best not to get nervous. And then he moves his bishop to g5. And I say, wait a minute. If you're going to have your bishop out there, why did you stop it there? Why didn't you just go to g5? That's losing a tempi. And I thought, all right, here we go. Oh, it sounds like some of you guys are trying to contact me online right now while I'm videoing to play me chess. Hang on, I'm videoing. Can't you see that? Oh, wait, I guess you can't. I haven't uploaded this yet. <laughs> I have like 20 games of chess going on all at once. So many people are challenging me. And I love it. Don't quit. Don't be offended if I decline, which gives me a chance to say right now, I am so busy right now. I'm giving it my all. At this point in time, correspondence chess works best with me. Not just one day. Make it at least two, preferably three. I will try to play faster than just one move every three days. Every now and then I can catch up with you and I can play you several moves, if not the entire game. That's wonderful when that happens. But correspondence three days per move at this point in time is best for me. Okay? Just so thank you for letting me do that and thank you for challenging me. I will try to accept the challenge. Now, what was I lying about? Yeah, he, he made a second move, bishop g5. And I said, okay, okay, hold on. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the file. Now, yeah, my bishop's in front of my rook, but I'm gonna take that file. This is a pillar I've been screaming about in my videos, my first online game, control the center, take the file. That is first rule number one, because I want this to turn out good. This game has to turn out good, or it's going to wipe my online chess playing psychology out, right? This is what I was thinking a month ago. Please let this work, but I'm not going to cross my fingers and hope. No. We don't play cross your fingers and hope chess. We play three pillar chess. Rooks, center, targets. That's what we play. Targets. I've got it set up so I have targets. I'm doing my three pillars. Central control. I've got pretty decent central control here. Rook on open file, although my bishop's in front of my rook at this point, I have the file, and targets. So here we go. I've got all three pillars in operation with my first online game. Let's see how this works. F3, he shuts me down. Of course, I expected that. But I bump back to bishop h5, keeping my eye on that queen. Yeah? He takes my knight which is one of the guardians of the central squares. Yes, so he is fighting me for the center. He's a fighter. This is wonderful. He's 1507 rated. He's played some chess, obviously, so this is awesome. So bishop takes f6. I do believe I have okay control of the center. It's not going to be a blowout. I have the open file. Make no mistake about it. I'm making a big deal about that. I was shaking in my boots with my first online chess game. I needed to win this so bad for my own psychology. And now, knight takes d5. Look at this guy. He is fighting me for the center. Yes. Nice. Okay. Let's keep going. Bishop takes d4 check. Target, target, center. The board is relatively open, 
So use the pieces that work with an open board, as I know Jeremy Silman and Arthur Yusupov say, so I want to use my bishops. I am trying as hard as I can to put every principle I've been saying in my videos to the test here. Yeah? King comes to h1. Now, bishop takes b2 target. I'm, I'm going to overemphasize this on purpose just to show you, you guys and gals in my club and on this video series of the Backyard Professor Chess videos, this stuff works. And that's so cool. <laughs> Even if you're online, it works. So I brought my bishop back to e5. Centralized target right against that castled king. I'm doing this on purpose. Deliberately. Now look. Rook e1 and he pins the bishop to the rook. Look, this guy is no Mickey Mouser. He is he is a good chess player. And I'm feeling it. And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to outdo you with my three pillars. Queen d6. Centralization support in my center and development so that my rooks are connected. Everything I've been saying in my videos I'm trying desperately hard to do. Queen e2, look at this. Yeah, he's putting it together, fully developed. Now he's got his rooks connected. He's got a long, wonderful diagonal. He's got a powerful central knight. He's got pawn coming up. I'm telling you, this guy has given me a run for the money, in my opinion. I said, okay, Jeremy Silman, bless me now, buddy, because centralization, advance, improve my position, and target, 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 target. Half of an octopus, as far as I was concerned, with that knight. Mm, yes! Supported, great center. And watch, just watch. Queen F2, and I took B3. I took the bishop. Because the bishop had that real nice long diagonal down to my king, I was willing to swap that bishop. The other thing is, that leaves me the bishop pair, and the board is relatively open. I'm doing everything I can to put Arthur Yusupov's ideas into this game, Jeremy Silman's ideas into this game, and all the pillars that I've learned from all those Grandmaster games and my hundreds of videos. Everything is packed into this game with every move, man. It's got to work. Rook B, D1. <laughs> This guy! He's coming right back! Very nice! And I said, if he's not going to take my knight... Yes, he centralized a rook. In my opinion, he made an error here. If not a blunder, he should have taken my knight. Now... One, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and he has one, two, three, four pieces. I am whittling him down. At that point, when he did not exchange my knight, and I centralized my knight again, the first of my online jitters, the butterflies in my stomach, the palpitating heart, come on, you all know it. Every one of you guys who play online have this. <laughs> God, I hope I do this right. That disappeared. I was home. I was comfortable. And I was going to win. Because I know this stuff works. Whether over the board or online. So here's what happened. At this point, I said, deal. Let's play. And he took my knight. Kablam! He's still fighting for the center, wonderfully so. 
very nice. I went ahead and took with my bishop and he took my rook check so I took his rook check notice who has the rook and who doesn't and notice who has the open file and who doesn't and notice who is controlling the center better and who isn't and notice whose queen is superior to whose queen and notice whose minor pieces is superior to his because I have two and he has one at this point it was a done deal I knew I was gonna win the only question is how and then that dirty rat took my bishop yeah it was his turn he took the bishop check how many times have I talked about the back rank checkmate right <laughs> And I said, yeah, baby. I had the open file. He challenged me. And I saw the back rank check. And it was here that my opponent resigned. So I was super duper thrilled about this. All three pillars, very well illustrated. I defeated my first opponent, who was rated at 1507, which at the time stunned me. I'm thrilled, right? And, and of course, the ratings will vary depending on, you know, you got to play hundreds of games and all that. Right now, I think I'm like 1584 or something like that. Who knows? But anyway, so there's your first game I want to show you. I've got another one coming up. Hang on. Okay, this next game is from my new online friend, Checker99. Yes, I promised Checker99 I would put his game on the video. He sought me out. And he challenged me to a rapid chess game, 10 minutes plus 10 seconds. In rapid, you gotta play fast. <laughs> With the bump of 10 second increments, though, it makes it a little bit easier. This game took about four minutes, is all. Checker99 is a beginner. He's at about 1100 rated, and he's got heart. While we're playing rapid chess, he is texting me, trying to tell me what he sees. I love that. This guy has spirit. Really seriously, I like that. Ooh, weak squares. Ooh, am I occupying the center? Ooh, hey, I've got your bishop in line. Target. Nice. Yes, I'll give you full credit for that, man. Okay, let's play through this game. This was a rapid chess game. We did not monkey around with this. We had to hurry, more or less. Uh, although I will confess, 10 plus 10 is, is pretty good. That, that means after every move, you get 10 extra seconds added to your clock. And you can adjust that. You can make a game that's 8 minutes plus 3 seconds every move. Or 9 minutes plus 8 seconds, or whatever. You can play rapid any way you want it to set up. That's the cool thing about online chess. You can feel where you get the most comfortable and then play that for a while, right? So it's fun stuff. Knight c3. Now look at this guy go. He's opening really well, I thought. And then he does h3. Um, yeah, checker 99, bud, in my opinion. And he told me he wanted to give me notes to this, and he never got me the notes, so I apologize for scooping you, pal. But he wanted to let me know what he was thinking, you know, during the game. In my opinion, you're scared of ghosts with this move. It's a waste of time. You didn't need to do that. So just so you know for the future, don't bother with that. You would have been way better going here or here or here, or even here and going check. Not, yeah, bumping it, but truly, you should have developed a piece or a central pawn rather than this. Just so you know, while you're watching this video, my friend, um, in future games, don't bother with that. That's a waste of time. Even in rapid chess, you're losing time, right? So, that being said, let's proceed. 
Now look, okay, now bishop, bishop five. Look at this guy play. Not bad, right? For a beginner, not bad. Uh, and if I'm offending you by calling you a beginner, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend you, I promise, bud. I'm just trying to show a good game, give you credit where credit's due, and you deserve a lot of credit. I see a great chess player in you in the future. Just keep at it. Keep at it. And I'll be happy to play you as often as I can. So will everybody else in the club, and we'll all build up together. So I want bishop e7. Notice... Mostly for checker, but all the rest of you too. Notice this. I've got the black pieces, but my development is better than checkers. You notice that, bud? That's because you did this, and you're not worrying about your central squares. As much as you could. Okay? That's not a criticism. It's an observation. I already have four pieces developed, and my center is secure. That center is granite. Right? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Okay, now ace, a, no. Where'd he go? Oh, now he did go d3. Nice. And I went a6, bumping the bishop. And he went to bishop a4. Notice I didn't bother chasing your bishop either. Checker 99. I didn't keep pushing my pawns. Not at this point, not yet. Because there's a more important move, the castle. Tuck your king away. You have done that. Excellent, as far as I'm concerned. And then a3. Again, just, just a critique. I'm not criticizing you. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm not making fun of you. That was a waste of time. Don't do that anymore in your games. You're, you're scared of ghosts at this point. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you're worried about this and this at this point. And sometimes I know every rule is meant to be broken. Some grandmasters do play this, and it does help. But for rapid chess, I, I don't know if, you know, I'm just saying too much on the edges. And here was the move right here, queen c8. When you see your opponent move queen c8 and align with the bishop and... The reason I chose this, Checker 99, and all the rest of you, I need you to see this. I deliberately put my queen there because I saw the pawn was advanced. That's a target, bud. Queen with the bishop lined up, blam, I'm going to sacrifice the bishop. It's a king side attack. That was the clue right there. <clears throat> Here's the other thing I saw. While we were playing, I was centrally and I was more evenly distributed with my pieces because of the way I developed in rapid chess. Personally, I'm more comfortable making sure everything is covered. Where is your power? All of the power is over here. That's not a criticism. That's an observation. With five of your pieces over here, your king is somewhat lonely. So it's a king side attack. That board is telling me king side attack. The center is not locked, but it's not really open. So not a lot's going to happen in the center. My pawns are pointing this direction, so that's where I'm going. My knight can come up into here, as you'll find out. My bishops my queen, and my rook. So it is a kingside attack. This board says, oh, you want to go kingside? Do it. Do it, do it right now. So that's why I bumped that queen to c8. Bishop e3, nice developing move. He does have access over to here. He's left that diagonal open. He's got a good thrust this way. Yeah? However, like I said, this pawn was just screaming, come and take me. So I did. Here was my first part of my attack against Checker99, who played it very well. No kidding. You done good, Bubba. Rook to e1. You got to give your king space, apparently. But your mistake here is you definitely, when I took that pawn, you had to retake the bishop. That was your mistake. 
truly, sincerely, you needed to take that bishop. I, I know it would have left you wide open because the queen taken it, that's true, but it took a piece. It took an attacker rather than leave my attacker here because then I have this option. My queen is connected to my bishop and I can... There's your checkmate right there. This game is over if you don't do it right. Right? And you saw that. Checker 99 saw that. He bumped the pawn up. Very good. At this point, I said, I'm going to literally... Remember, it's rapid chess. You don't get to sit here and think for 10 minutes per move. You have 10 minutes for the whole game. <laughs> right? So... I'm going to throw everything at this side and combine everything. So I'm coming full tilt at him. Knight h5. I am willing to sacrifice my knight to get rid of this guy. Because I want this open for my queen and my bishop. Because that's my checkmate square for my queen. So to sacrifice another piece to get rid of those pawns, not a problem. I'm more than happy to do that. Just so you understand. He came to knight e2. He bumps back quick. Now he's defending. He's defending good. He defends the pawn that I want to get rid of. Yes? So, I threw the bishop over here. Now I have three pieces against this pawn. The bishop, the knight, and the queen. You have one two pieces defending it. So I'm going to get the pawn. Right? Yeah? King h2. What a good move. Yeah, connect. Attack that bishop. And at this point I was seeing this knight here is bothersome. It's controlling this. The, the pawn is controlling this pawn. But that knight, man, that cotton picking knight stopping me. I want to get rid of that knight. But I don't want to lose the bishop. However, I will lose the bishop to take this knight. And he does take the bishop with his king, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. And then I said, okay, time out. Covered. Nice cover, too. Ooh, he's got the rank here where he can start pulling in more protection. I have to attack right now, fast, immediately, Go, man, go, but I don't have enough. I'm not going to be able to do it with just a bishop and a knight and a queen. I need more. So, the rook. My thinking was, the knight can't make it in here. He's got the knight covered. I, my own square's in my way. I've got one, and that square's covered, so I've got one, two, three hops before I can convince this guy to try to take my knight, right? In three hops, he'll have the rook, the queen, and the other rook over. So the knight is out. The rook, I can come to here. One, two, three. Three hops. Again, just like the knight. Three moves is too slow in a kingside attack, and checker 99 was on the ball, he was bringing his pieces over and making it possible to bring in the heavy guns. So he was doing good. So my only option was F5, this rook, right now. Yeah? Rook G1. I knew it. He's going to start pulling in, pulling in reinforcements. So I went rough at rook f6 and I gave him the bishop. I thought, you know what? It would be I wanted to come to here. That was going to be my next move. If he didn't take the bishop, I was going to go there because I was going to directly challenge. I wasn't going to take it with the rook. I was going to take it with the knight because I wanted to get rid of this knight and this pawn. So the knight was going to be first if he took it with the knight or the pawn, irrelevant to me, once I had the rook here, then I was going to take it with the bishop. And from there, I can bring my queen down here and start checking the king. Right? So that's what, that was my thinking at this point. And he took the bishop. And I can't blame you. I mean, the king took 
two bishops, three pieces, except now you gave me a new checkmate square. And that's where I checkmated you. So that's the quick rapid game that I had with my new online friend, Checker99. He's pretty young, he's a beginner, and he is energetic, he is a go-to kid, he is a good guy. Keep going is my encouragement to you, buddy. You keep playing chess, and the day will come where you beat the BYP. And when you do, when you beat me, when you get good enough to beat me, <laughs> I'm not the best player to play to beat, but, you know, if you want to beat the BYP so that you can talk about it, I will video that game. But I'm not going to give it to you. And I am studying hard. I'm not giving it to you. If you beat me, it's because you did beat me. I'm not going to throw a game to anybody. Okay, fair enough. Okay, let's do one more game. I've got another game for you. Oh, all this blabbing about the BYP, how embarrassing. Okay, this third game I want to show you, I played just recently by a good friend of mine who's rated at 1524 and Eom. Eom 305, E-O-M, is Mo backwards. Mo, here's our game, just like I told you. I asked Mo if I could show this because I have been studying tactics and when I first got online everybody was trouncing me because I could not see tactics and I have been really working hard on tactics on the advice of some very good friends in the chess club. You know who you are. All of you. <laughs> really, truly. But uh, Juzerneem and Juni and Odoker and uh, Merlin, and all of you, Phoenix, all of you guys who were really high rated, and I, I'm, I hate singling out anybody because then you other guys are going to feel left out, and I'm not trying to make you feel left out, but you really told me get with tactics, and so I have been, and it's starting to show. And I told Mo this, I said, I, I'd like to show this game because I had some tactics in here that I've never seen in my games before, and he was gracious enough to say, yeah, yeah, show the game. So, here we go. Mo is a wonderful chess player. We had a lot of fun in this one. E4, E5, F3, which was an unusual uh, move, I thought, for an opening. Bishop D3, blocking the pawn is not advisable, just, just to be aware of that. It would be better, honestly, before you develop a bishop, to bump the pawn first. Otherwise, your bishop is blocking your pawn. That was one of the first problems in your development I saw. I'm not trying to sound like I'm the expert. I, I, I'm not, but that that's problematic. Try not to do that in your future videos if you can, or your future games if you can at all help it. Bishop e7, a3 again. Uh, like I told my other good friend, Checker99, that is a, a waste of a move. There's nothing over there threatening that wing at all. There's nothing that can even get to that wing. Don't worry about the edge yet. Keep coming with your center, your knights, your bishops, your pawns in various structures. Every opening has some decent structures with the fight for the center. That's not one of them. Just so you know, bud. So, you notice I came right at your center pawn. Absolutely. D5 all the way. 92, that's not a bad development. Because of the way you pushed your F3, which was a little odd, you had to bring your knight to here instead of here where it belonged because the uh, square that you want to influence is, well, yeah, yeah. No, you are doing okay. You're hitting this square. Of course, and I'm hitting that square too. Ah, it's okay. It's not a big deal. I'm probably making too much about it, but in my opinion, your knights needed to be here and here for this particular opening. And then you did b3. Now, you're going to fee and keto, which is a great idea. There's nothing wrong with fee and kettling at all. I came to e6. My bishops cut a swath that direction and that direction. Yes, bishop b2, nice fee and kettle. Great, you're hitting this pawn, beautiful. See, had you been able to develop your knight here, you would have the knight hitting that pawn and your fee and kettle bishop hitting that pawn. But because you blocked yourself with f3, you're over here, you're hitting this square and this square, and you're missing that square. 
So the fight for the center is a little less strong because of your opening. I'm just pointing it out. I'm, I'm honestly not trying to criticize you. Right? I went ahead and castled. I am not trying to pose as an expert in giving you all this flashy sounding knowledge either. No, it's just basic general stuff. Look, C4, nice. Attacking the center, hitting the center pawn twice now. So you're fighting for the center. Very good. Nice. But I pulled a trick on you. And, and I mean, it's to every... Everybody has their own tastes. But I thought because of the way you opened and because of your knight, the, the place you put your knight, that could have been a square you can go to and so could that. By me leaving this here, I give you a chance to come here and take out this pawn through an exchange and then you own that square. But I'm owning it right now. Here you are attacking that square. So that's why I pushed the pawn. My knight, my pawn, and my queen, I seal off your knight's influence in the center. He's no good. I also seal off your fianchettoed bishop. He's no good. At least he is so limited that he won't be influential. I mean, this is my hope, right? This is my thinking while I'm doing this opening. Because of where your bishop, or, or your knight was, and because of where you put your bishop, and this is the dark square uh, pawn chain, and because of the way I put my knight up here and not here. See, if I'd been here, I'd been here and here with the influence, but coming up to C6, that's my square, it made beautiful sense not to open the board by attacking and attacking and open a file here, but to close it because it gives me more central space and it severely limited two pieces of yours, three, because the knight can't come here either. This pawn's already passed. This pawn is already passed. This, this feature in chess uh, lingo is called a hole. By pushing the two pawns here, I'm not criticizing your pawn pushes, but by putting your bishop in front of the pawn, it created a backward pawn, which is a weakness, and you gave me a gigantic hole right there, so my power is occupied. Notice, had I put the knight here, that's exchangeable. The knight could take, or the bishop could take, and exchange, and then I would have had doubled up pawns. I would have still had the hole plugged up, which puts a severe cramp on your development and your capability of getting your queen out and your knight out, but it wouldn't have been as good as that, because that maintains my pawn chain. Sorry to be such a lecturer, but I'm just explaining why I did this. That is why. It gave me a great opportunity. So remember that in your openings if you see someone else who pushes the F3 or the C3 before developing the knights. you got to be careful because you need your knights on those squares. Right? And you definitely need this pawn to advance and you can't now. So I'm, I'm just saying. I don't mean to beat a horse, but, but... Okay, so knight g3, see? You are looking to get more space, uh, more use out of your pieces, which is is the right thing to do. I went ahead and went knight h5. Because I see a great outpost for my knight. That is sweet. I mean, that was so mouth-watering, I could not... I could not avoid the temptation. I'm not fully developed yet, and I'm already chasing that. One thing, your knight is in front of this pawn, so you won't be chasing me off for a little while, right? 
So that was my thinking on this. Then you came back to E2. Okay. Okay. And I went to D3. Blam. And I, I, I understand you took the pawn. You see, because of the hole and the power of jumping in it, it gained me a piece, right? Th this, th that's a horror. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing can come out. The knight can't, the bishop can't. So, so you took it, and I understand that, but that's my, then I took it with the queen, and I'm still blockading that pawn, that incredibly important central pawn. This is a great illustration to show how important it is to push your central pawns because I have more space and I have a powerful blockade here. The queen can't move. The bishop can't do anything. The knight can't be effective. Uh, you can't castle, and that's why also I wanted my queen there. I prevent you to ca from castling, so I keep your king in the center, which I'm going to attack. This is the power of, of recognizing in an opening when there's a hole and occupy it. Take possession of it, and I have a partial file that I've used. With the queen, not the rook, but it's okay. It works. So... You're in a little bit of a quandary here. Knight c3, develop, yes, get that baby out here. Bishop h4. <sighs> Pinning the knight to the king with a deadly queen right here. And this knight is attacking that knight. I'm going to win another piece. Right? You went ahead and went knight b5 here. Knight b5, uh, a developing move. Uh, you would be better honest to goodness, and I know how tough it is to, to do this, but you would have been better to pull your rook here and your queen here and, and swap the ladies, in my opinion. Uh, th th this is too powerful. This is too much. You allowed me to stay here. If your opponent ever does that, don't let them. I'm on a file. I am completely cramping the center. It's worth a swap of the queens to get rid of that. And then advance that pawn quick. Right? That makes sense? You did develop another piece further a little bit, but there, the value is the file. Uh, the value is, is the, the block on the pawn. I have access to you through this. Yeah, you got a target, and yeah, you got a target, and yeah, you'll have a, a brief hit on a rook, but I'm not going to leave that rook there anyway. So that knight move did not do anything that, that was uh, beneficial to your position. I, I'm, I'm not criticizing you, I so promise. I'm just observing here, trying to read the board. Rook A to D8, rooks belong on open files without question. Now, it's not an open file. It's a blocked pawn on a file, though. And that's just as valuable to me in this game. So I am going to do everything I can to absolutely keep that pawn right there, no matter what. The defect is it is on the d3 square, which is a white square, and that's your weakness because you lost your white squared bishop. The Dark squared bishop can't chase me off, and you're going to have to swap the queen. Or get your knight in such a position that you can attack my queen. But you can see, you can't. Uh, where you're at, this is blockaded, you can't get to my queen with the knight either. And so this is why this worked out to be so well, because of the nature of your position, which I was trying to read and grasp, and make sure I improved my imbalance as best I could, right? Knight takes c7, you got a pawn, 
But like I say, I didn't give a flying flip about that. That that is irrelevant. I understand you had to do something, but that doesn't that didn't help you. Uh, it's too bad it didn't. But knight d4. I'm coming full bore at you now. I brought the knight in here. Uh, yeah, I can check here, but then I'll just lose the queen with the knight and the. So I'm I'm thinking I got to get rid of that knight because this knight controls this square and this square, and believe you me, that was definitely on my mind. Really seriously, that would have been a great fork for me. Check to the king and get the rook. Being exchanged down, yes. So my idea was I have to break through on this side here. Yes. And I did that, and, and the bishop did take the knight, so now I've got rid of that problematic bishop. And here's why it was problematic, because I wanted to bring my rook up here as well, because I'll show you why. Knight takes... Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, where's e6? That can't possibly be right. Knight takes e6. Oh yeah, knight takes e6, yes. Sorry, I was looking up here. I was looking for, for this. No, yeah, you took the bishop. Now the bishop uh, wasn't as necessary to me as the rook and the queen and the bishop and the knight. But but you took a piece, but it I had it covered. It was a great fork on the rook and the rook. It really was. It would have been a good tactic if this pawn wouldn't have been there. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't have a whole lot left to do. You got a bishop for the knight, that's true, but neither the pawn or the bishop was a critical piece compared to what I'm, I'm going to attack you with, right? So that was a great, you had an eye for tactic, and, and you get points for that as far as I'm concerned. That was awesome. F4, you're going to try to break through and expand and get some space, which is awesome. You really do need to do that. But I'm one shoe ahead of the step shine, so to speak. And because I'm one shoe ahead of the step shine, check. And of course, it's a bishop sacrifice. Because I need my knight, or my queen in here, to go check. I couldn't do it with the knight there because the pawn was supporting it, so I had to eliminate the knight so that I can start doing forcing moves, which is the queen checking the king. Yes. King comes to e2. And then knight takes f4, check. And then king goes to f1, and queen takes g2, check. And king comes back over to e1, and now knight comes to d3, checkmate. The idea here is it's wonderful that you had some ideas uh, in the development developing stages, you just applied them incorrectly. It's not a criticism, I promise. I'm not an expert here, grandmaster, showing you lousy, your lousy chess. You did not have lousy chess. I was fortunate enough to have read enough of Jeremy Silman and Arthur Yusupov at this point in my chess studies that I could recognize immediately the problematic nature of your opening. Pushing the f3 pawn and putting your knight here was one really huge clue to me. The other one was your bishop in front of that pawn. That was another clue to me. Then, when you push both these pawns and left a hole, that's where I attacked because that's the weakness which Arthur Yusupov describes so well in his materials. When acquiring targets, which is a weakness, as well as using the files and controlling the center. So all three pillars again seem to work out good. Mo, I'm looking forward to playing with you a lot more. We talked about this in chat while we were playing. Uh, we, we will discuss the various types of positions and where to move the pieces and all. That's the kind of chess I like to play with you guys anyway. We talk throughout the course of the game. 
uh, Boris Ospasky and I just have a blast playing each other because we're constantly talking. We're saying, well, I think if I push the, if I push the A-pawn here, then that leaves you this, but I've got this type of chess game. And that's what I'll do with you, like I told you in the comments before, Mo. So, anyway, that's, that's three games. Um, shall I do four? I have a fourth one. L let, let me do one more, because I've, I've got another new online friend who is I see great potential in, Kata Zero. I'm going to show that game. Hang on. This fourth game I want to show you is by Kata O. Kata O found me here uh, the other day, and I've been playing. I'm going to call him a him. I don't know if he, it's a guy or a gal yet. If you are a female, I apologize sincerely. I mean, no offense. I'm going to say him, not trying to be sexist or anything, but um, I see great potential in this player. I'm telling you what. He plays like crazy. We, we, we played a few times, and this last time, he defeated me really well. It was a great game, so congratulations. I'm going to show you our first game that we had because there was a couple things that I thought were extremely interesting. I played the Queen Gambit and he took it. Queen Gambit accepted and he said so. I accept the Gambit pawn, so good deal, good deal. So Knight C3 and Knight F6, very properly so. Knight F3 and we're going long. Bishop G4. Put that hint to the Knight e3, bump the e-pawn, knight d5 to here, and bishop takes c4, which happens in the queen gambit accepted very often. That's usually the main move you want to do. And now knight takes c3. Very cool. Hitting the little lady. So I'm not going to let you take her, so I take you with the b-pawn. So, and now, center, center pawn. Very, very good. I came to queen c2, and bishop takes f3. Yeah, I moved my queen out of the way to c2. I've been, I've been looking at some opening variations, and this one works real good with the queen gambit decline, but it does goof up my pawn structure on the king side where I want a castle. Right? That's the downside of this, so now my king side uh, pawns are... Uh, Collaborate and oh no c5 look at this c5 coming straight out gaining more space hitting the center fighting for the center very nice I came to here because I see targets and I know the bishop could have went check but then you just have the knight to block it right so it doesn't accomplish much the queen could have come check, but then you just, whoops, then you have the knight to block it, so it doesn't accomplish much. Get your queen on the A file, that's true. Instead, I chose to see what Kata would do with this. I was fully expecting Kata to do this, which could have potentially been problematic, except then I bring my queen up to here and go check. And now I'm in a good position, really, truly. That's what I was thinking was going to happen, yes? But he didn't push the B-pawn. What he did instead is he went ahead and went knight d7. So I took the B-pawn. Target, absolutely. Target on an open file. No, it's not a central open file. Sometimes it doesn't have to be. I won this game on this file, right? So this is all to the good. Queen a5, development, bringing the queen out. i got to be careful here, um, unless I castle real quick. I came to queen b3, supporting my rook, because if I can get my dark squared bishop developed and get rid of a pawn here, I'm seeing a quick checkmate possibility. I've got to get rid of that knight somehow. So I'm thinking, okay, okay, yeah. I want my queen in here and my bishop going this direction. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, my bishop, instead of doing a bishop sacrifice on a castled kingside against the h pawn, I could do a bishop sacrifice in the center with the e6 pawn. 
And then my mind started brewing up all kinds of fun, interesting things. So I came to queen b3, bishop d6, developing, central development, can't fault Kata for that at all. And I went ahead and took the e6 pawn. Now, I haven't done a computer analysis on this yet. It'll probably criticize me for this, but this to me works, and I'll show you why. It is very disconcerting. If he takes the bishop, then I take it with the queen, and I've got the bishop. That was the tactic I had in mind. I did this uh, before I played this game. I did this in a rapid game, and it worked beautifully. I did the bishop sacrifice in front of the king instead of over on the edge when the king was in the center instead of being castled, and it worked fantastic. So I was going to net a piece by that sacrifice. I could see that. He takes, I take, check, and then I've got this guy. And then my queen's here, then my rook's here, then I've got this guy, unless he bumps his queen back down, right? Or, or castles really quick, right? So I was very excited about this. And then Kata, instead of retaking, and this is where I see some potential greatness in Kata Zero. Uh, I've told him, come and join our club. He, he just basically got a hold of me a couple days ago online. He's heard about our club. He's been watching these videos, thank goodness. He's heard about our club, and he will come and join us. But uh, he castled Queenside. Which was really interesting. That surprised me no end. I'm going, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I want to keep my initiative. So, and, and I'm not fully developed. I really want this other rook into this game. My bishop's not uh, into this yet. I'm, I'm doing a partial attack. I have a fantastic file. And he castled right into my file, but his knight is holding up the square. So i got to get rid of that knight. And that means I've got to trade down. I, I could take this, but that doesn't help me. Uh, so I took the knight. <laughs> I said, damn, man, I'm going to have to trade down. I took the knight, and of course the rook took the knight, and then I took the rook, and then the king took the rook. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm not out of options yet. Let's go check. I need to keep making forcing moves. But, but that was, that castling that side instead of this side really uh, caught me off guard. I thought, wow, that, that took some gumption. And... The reason I have to keep making forcing moves now is because of a tactic Kata has that I saw. He can take here with the queen and win a bishop, right? Unless I go this way, which doesn't appeal to me because the, yeah, that, anyway, he's got access in here. And I've got to find a way to uh, control that if I can. So in the meantime, I have to keep checking is what I saw. King e6. And queen to e4. I came back to the center. I saw this idea here. But I thought I'm going to keep it in the center because I have so many pawns. And Kata mentioned that. Kata mentioned, whoo, I got out of that pickle. And I said, yeah. You really did. You did fantastic. I did not want to trade down this far. Uh, we each have three pieces, and I saw a tactic where I could have got a piece ahead. I ended up with even material piecewise, but I have the central pawns, so the end game is assured. I think I've got this one, but I have to keep forcing. Otherwise, he's going to come down here and do some kind of a perpetual checking and put it into a draw. And that is what I did not want. That's what I was thinking. So, queen e4, king d7, queen f5. And I was thinking, if, if he goes that way, I'm taking that pawn. Right? Nope. Came to e7. No, 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 no. 
We're uh, yeah, E7, went back toward the pawn. Very good. So I came to Queen G5, and now I've got the pawn, but look. Something else very interesting occurred to me at this point. If, now I'm going to hit this. I'm going to take the pawn. I'm going to wreck the three pawn structure. Mine's wrecked, but I have more central pawns. But if I beat up this pawn structure, these are just worthless. Both of those are really weak. I don't even have to worry about attacking that at this point. Because if he takes, then I take there, and I still have my group of pawns together. That's not that big a deal at all. So, if Kata comes to here, then what I can do is come to here. Put the rook on there. Now, that gives him a free move. That gives him a free move where he can go check, and then I push the bishop up, then he comes check, and I push the king up, but the rook is covered by the queen so that he takes a2. And if he takes a2, then I've got checkmate. And I thought, so the key to this position is to let him think he's going to get it on me. So I went rook g1. The other idea is, if he didn't move his king, I was going to go here and go check and get me a rook, right? So I think I've got him, is what I'm trying to say. King f8, and I want rook g1, and then queen takes c3, check. And I said, okay, good so far. That's what I saw. That's good. And bishop to d2, uncheck. And then queen a1, check. Yes understood, and now the rook cannot be taken, but the a2 pawn can, and he is out of play. Now what he has to do is lose his queen by putting his bishop here. But here's the catch. I wouldn't take his queen. I wouldn't care about his queen. I wouldn't care about my rook. Because now I've got a forced checkmate. If he didn't see it, he could bump some pawns, but I can wipe him out that way. So, I said I didn't care about my rook. Technically, that's not true. Anyway, queen a2. He took it, and I went, oh, whoop, the bishop was here. And I went checkmate, and it really surprised Kata. Kata said, oh, I did not see that move. And I told him in the notes, I said, look, I have some really wonderful friends in my club that this is why you need to come into the club, because I have some wonderful friends who give us excellent chess advice, and the advice they've been telling me is study tactics for real. And the principle with tactics is look at every single piece to see what they can do. If you don't do that, you will miss stuff. Now that doesn't mean all of a sudden you become an expert at tactics. You have to practice thousands of them. I've only been practicing a few hundred. I have a year or two to go before I get real good but I'm going to. And so this tactic worked. So thank you for the game, Kata O. I'm looking forward to meeting you in the club, and you'll love everybody else too. Thanks for watching my Backyard Professor Chess videos. I've made this way too long, but I'm not going to apologize because these have been fairly instructive games showing you that the three pillars work, and through the study of tactics, my chess is improving. I'm not saying that to brag, other members of the club have said, yeah, we're seeing a difference in the way you're playing. It works, just not fast enough as we want. <laughs> I wish I was the grandmaster, yeah? I know, I've only been here a month and a half or two. I've only been doing videos for the last four months. I wish I was the grandmaster already, but it's not going to happen that way. It 
it is a process that takes time, and lots of effort, and when you lose, you feel horrible. But when we shift our focus a little bit and say, rather than worrying about winning or losing, let's learn from each other while we're playing the game and have some laughs, have some fun, explore some options, and see what that gets us. And we learn tactics and strategy together while we're playing, and that's the very best kind of chess. That's what we have with the Backyard Professor Fan Chess Club Club on leeches. Come and jump in. We are having a ball. We have all kinds of fabulous information. Juzerneme, that fantastic video that I just showed the previous one to this, he is one of our members. We have solid qual I mean, Odoker and Merlin and Phoenix and Juni. Juni's getting good. Oh, Gadfrey. Playing him is like, phew, it's getting tough. Vampir Toza. I mean, there are just so many of you I'm playing, I can't name y'all. I don't mean to slight you. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying the club is working. It's fabulous, and it's a lot of fun. So anyway, that's enough preaching. Thanks for watching my videos. Do good, be well, have fun. Uh, shop smart. Drive safe. Put your seatbelts on. Drink more water. Uh, eat less junk food. Get rid of sugar. Sugar is no good. Sh quit eating sugar. That crap will poison your brain. No more sugar. No more candy. Yeah, I know you love candy. Look, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups is my bane, but I don't eat them anymore. Don't eat sugar. And low carbs, if at all. Much more meat. Good food. Anyway, I'm getting preachy. I apologize. I think. <laughs> but I want all of you to stay in the club and, and be healthy and happy and have fun. So... All right, you guys, thank you again for watching. I will be back with another Backyard Professor Chess video. And yes, I'm going to get back on to Bobby Fischer. Several of you have asked me, what happened to the Bobby Fischer series, man? I really want that. I do too. And I will get back on track, I promise. Bobby Fischer coming up. I'm going to hit it like a freight train going 220 down the track. So we're going to learn a lot of good stuff with Bobby Fischer. And I mean... A lot. Okay, yeah. Enough antics. Shut up and shut the video off. Dude, you're really bugging me, man. I've already watched all of you. I can take with you. Just shut the heck up and turn the video off, please. See ya.